I think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great, smarter, more aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. <laughs> Like I could. Take on the world. Look, Hoagie, it's a hamster. Just what I need for dissection lab tomorrow. I think I need that for the band, Laverne. You know, like we could bite its head off or whatever. Hands off that hamster. Friend of yours, Bernard? He belongs to Weird Ed Edison, and it looks like he's brought us a note. It's from my old friend, Green Tentacle. He says that Purple Tentacles mutated into an insane genius, and Dr. Fred's going to kill them both! I thought I was free of Dr. Fred and those crazy Edisons forever. But now, I know that I must go... back to the mansion! Okay, we'll spread out commando style. 
Laverne, you go secure the area behind those double doors. Hoagie, you take care of upstairs reconnaissance. I'll maintain Command HQ here, in the lobby. What are we looking for? We've got to find where Dr. Fred is holding the tentacles. This better not take too long. I've got an anatomy final tomorrow. And I've got a show to set up later tonight. If I'm late, I don't get to test the drums. If I know Dr. Fred, he's got the tentacles tied up in his secret lab. Question is, where's his secret lab? Mmm, spearmint, my favorite. Neat! That one looks like it's from a local hardware store. Help wanted. Lab assistant. Hard-working moronic drone needed to assist genius with experiments. High school diploma. Not required. Laverne's covering that territory. It's closed. It's a bottle of correctional fluid. Gee, Dr. Fred doesn't have a penny. Sleek design, sturdy construction, attractive housing. All in all, a fine phone. Even 911 won't handle this kind of emergency. Looks like Dr. Fred wearing a powdered wig. Handsome in a way, but I'm glad he eventually accepted his hair loss. Boy, the Edisons are a spectacularly ugly family. The safe is closed. I don't know the combination. It looks broken, but there's something in the coin return. Hoagie's got that part of the house. Nineteen fifty two. I'd rather not. I'd rather not. How did that get up there? I can't reach it up there. I'm not leaving this motel until I find those tentacles. There's something funny about that clock. Hmm, there's something funny about that clock. It won't budge. It won't budge. Aha! A secret passage. This is all too easy.
Laverne, how'd you get upstairs? Am I upstairs? I got lost. Seen any tentacles? What's a tentacle? Oh, just something I whipped up in my spare time. Made good pets, actually. Until one of them tried to take over the world and to tie the little buggers up in the basement. Good thing you told us that. Yeah, Bernard wanted us to set them free. Thank God you weren't that stupid. Did you say Bernard? Okay, you're free to go. Thanks, Bernard. Yes, thank you, naive human. Now I can finish taking over the world. <laughs> Wait! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He's incredibly evil, isn't he? Uh, I'll try to talk him out of it. Well, what possible harm could one insane mutant tentacle do? Leaping lab rats! Dr. Fred! What have you done this time, you meddling milk toast? Now Purple Tentacle is free to use his evil mutant powers to take over the world and enslave all humanity! Whoops! Our only hope now is to turn off my sludge magic machine and prevent the toxic mutagen from entering the river! Isn't it a little late for that, Doctor? Of course! That's why I'll have to do it! Yesterday! To the time machine! This is all your fault, Bernard. Behold, children! The Chronogon! Da, can't you just send Bernard? No, you must all go to increase the odds that one of you will make it there alive! Have any people ever been hurt in this thing? Of course not! This is the first time I've ever tried it on people! Bernard, float over here so I can punch you. This must be that Woodstock place Mom and Dad are always talking about. What could it all mean? I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> Die. <laughs> Die. We may not live to see yesterday. I'm sure Dr. Fred wouldn't have done this if it weren't safe. After all, he is a doctor. It works! I can't believe it! And they said imitation diamond wasn't good enough. Uh-oh. Order jewels. What happened to Hokey and Laverne? I knew I should have bought a real diamond. Are they alive? My dials say that the larger specimen landed 200 years in the past, and the other is stuck 200 years in the future. Well, hurry up and bring them back. I will, as soon as I get a new diamond. Then all your buddies have to do is plug in their respective chronogons and... Plug them in? Where is Hoagie going to find an electrical outlet 200 years in the past? <laughs> 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 
Yes, well, he'll be needing my patented super battery then, won't he? Now, where did I put those patented super battery plans of mine? Plans? How are we gonna get Hoagie plans? Don't worry me with details, boy. Just help me find the plans. They're in this house somewhere. Now what am I going to do? I think I made myself perfectly clear. Step one, find plans. Step two, save world. Step three, get out of my house. Let's get cracking. I'm surprised I ever got out of there alive. Neat! I don't want to cause any more trouble. Maybe I put them upstairs. That's got to be it. Upstairs! There, it's off. But it's too late now. Warning! Output from this device is highly toxic and may cause tyrannical delusions if ingested. It looks like a generator driven by a treadmill. It won't budge. It's Dr. Fred's design for a super battery. It's capable of storing up to one gigavolt with a charging time of only 0.01 seconds. Wow! I've got the plans! Quick, we have to flush them to Hoagie! How did you get over there? My ingenious super battery design, please. You really flush them? Yes! Down the toilet! No! Through time! Using the highly sophisticated time flux hydraulic vortex chamber I've installed in each chronogen, you can flush small inanimate objects to each other through time! Flush small inanimate objects to each other through time! Hello? Dr. Fred, can you hear me? Drat. Did you hear something? No. Let's see if what's-his-name catches on. Oh, great. I'm stuck in colonial times, tentacles are taking over the world, and now the toilet's backing up. Okay, come over here. It's your old pal, Dr. Fred. Dr. Fred, how'd you get in there? I want you to pick up those plans you see in the chronogen, Hoagie. Bring them to Red Edison. He's my great, 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 great grandfather. He'll know what to do. You need the plans to make a super battery so you can plug in your chronogen. Okay, if you say so, Bernard. Good boy. Does he have any experience with electronics? Um, well, I once saw him take 3,000 volts directly through his head without batting an eye. Didn't he pass out? Well, he was already passed out when it happened. Time for me to save the world, I guess. So as soon as Hoagie gets that battery working, we're set. I'm afraid not. We still need a diamond for the main unit. And your friend in the future needs power too, if she's still alive. Alive? Get me out of here! I like trees and everything, but this one has got to go.
gets unplugged. Grody. Nah, it stinks. Ye oldy outhouses. Mmm, kumquats. Soon all the power of the heavens will be mine! Oh, mine! If only we had some nasty weather! Hi there, mister. Franklin! Ben Franklin! Soon to be known as the inventor of electricity! Uh, do you know Red Edison? He's a scientist guy, too. Red Edison? A scientist? He's just an innkeeper who pretends to be a scientist, and he's not very good at doing either one. I can't believe Washington and Jefferson picked his inn, of all places, to write our Constitution. Shouldn't you say, the discoverer of electricity? You think the ultimate power in the universe is just under some rock waiting to be discovered? Ha! I, Ben Franklin, am going to summon power from the sky by sheer force of genius! I could use a little power myself for my time machine. There will be power enough for all in time. There aren't any time machines yet anyway. That's next summer's project. You are truly whacked, Ben. Huh, <laughs> that's what they said about the man who invented bifocals. Wasn't that you? Good point. Guess they were right. How exactly are you going to do that power luring? Using one of my newest inventions. I like to call it the Francocopter. That's a kite, Ben. They've been around for thousands of years. Oh, sure, as toys. But this one is a letter to the gods. It says, Dear Thor, just one drop of your mighty juice in the hands of a genius like me could illuminate the entire world. Love, Ben. I hope you wrote it in Swedish so Thor can read it. Or were those guys Norwegian? I was speaking figuratively. What actually is happening is that I'm waiting for lightning to strike my kite. And then what? And then the electricity charges the kite. And then what? Then the electricity travels down the string. And then what? It charges me, of course. And then what? I glow with its almighty power. And then what? I use its power to make the world a better place. And then what? The world kneels before me, asking me to guide it with my mighty benevolence. And then what? I have all annoying pests like you locked up. And then what? Shot! Oh, I see. Aren't you missing a key or something? The key to discovery is daring intellect, my boy. Daring intellect and rigorous science. No, I mean a real key key. You mean the where the heck did I put my keys kind of key? Yeah. That's a manual device. It needs no power. Seriously, man, what are you thinking? Isn't it too sunny for lightning? Shh, I know that. I'm just trying to keep my grant going until we get a storm. Well, I'm going to back away now, just in case. Carry on.
It's totally covered with crud. Bitchin'. You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once. What's up? Don't feel like talking, huh? Vow of silence or something, probably, right? Well, that's cool. I have something for Red Edison. Do you know where I could find him? Great hat, man. I know some dudes in a band who'd eat roaches for hats like that. Know where I could get them a couple of hats extra big? Do they come in a variety of designer colors? Black is good, but how about red? Then again, I guess red wouldn't go over too big here at the moment. Well, nice talking to you, dude. Hey. What is it? You look kind of familiar. Of course I do. I'm Red Edison, the inventor. Not to mention owner of this inn. Perhaps you've seen my picture in some important scientific journal. Then again, maybe not. Do you know Ben Franklin? Franklin? <laughs> I would never associate with that overstuffed goofball. He has the stupidest idea about glasses with one red lens and one blue one. What are you doing? I'm inventing you, simpleton. What's it look like I'm doing? What are you inventing? It's a new size independent fastening mechanism based on circular geometry. I know an inventor who looks a bit like you. Well, it's not one of my sons, that's for sure. It appears that I, Red Edison, foremost genius of my day, am to be the last in a long line of gifted inventors. My nearly indistinguishable sons have decided that they want to be artists. I think it was Jed's idea. Or is it Ned? Ah, well, the left-handed one at any rate. Must be some sort of bad blood on their mother's side. What are you inventing? It's a new size independent fastening mechanism based on circular geometry. Well, see you later. You might if you cut that hair a bit shorter. Just looks like a regular hammer to me, but then I'm no scientist. Say, hey, that's a left-handed hammer, you know. I invented it myself. It was for my ungrateful slob of a left-handed son. Oh, well. It looks more like a raincoat than a lab coat. Hey, only employees are allowed to use that lab coat. Help Wanted, Lab Assistant, 
hard-working moronic drone needed to assist genius with experiments. High school diploma not required. Okay, I flushed it. Help wanted lab assistant. Hard working moronic drone needed to assist genius with experiments. High school diploma not required. What's this? Mm, help wanted, moronic drone, mm, assist genius, yada yada yada. Well, I'm the only genius around, and you look dumb enough. Uh. So pick up your lab coat and get to work. It looks more like a raincoat than a lab coat. It looks kind of small for me. It's covered with plans and junk. No way could I pick that up. I guess this is George Washington's bed. It's all rumpled up. I bet it calls the butler just like on TV. Here I am, don't get your curls in an uproar. Excuse me, Mr. Washington. Boy, what a mess. It's all rumpled up. Don't touch that, I'm trying to straighten up. All done here. Bye now. <gasps> here I am. Don't get your curls in an uproar. Excuse me, Mr. Washington. I told you guys I'll get to the flag next. I'm working as fast as I can. Hey, chill. Take your time. Don't tell me you've got another design change for the flag. I've got another design change for the flag. I knew it. What's the current brainstorm from our fickle founding fathers? We need a babe in a leather bikini swinging a broad axe. Oh, 
What the heck? At this point, I'd do anything just to have it over with. Put the pattern on the table and I'll look at it when I'm done with this job. Stars and stripes, dull, dull, dull. Hey, don't criticize unless you got a better idea. Gosh, I'd never want to mess with history. I like these. Too late. You've already rejected those. I don't want them. I know that already. Looks comfortable. I couldn't sleep in here with all the racket. Who asked you? That'd make a killer t-shirt. I don't want it. You're all so hard to please. Chateau de Chipo, 1775. I don't quite see how it can fly. I don't understand that technical stuff. Hey, what's that on the plans? It looks like a secret backwards message. Oh, it's just a coffee stain. I don't quite see how it can fly. Probably the underwear drawer. Grody, man. I don't go through people's underwear. Looks like he spent a lot of time in there. Nah, there's printer's ink on the sheets. Uh, hi, horsey. Oh, hi yourself. Wow, you can talk. Wow, so can you. What a coincidence. I didn't think horses could talk. Maybe they just never had anything to say to you. Ever think of that? You mean horses have been snubbing me my whole life? Well, if you want to put it that way. Is this some kind of a trick? I don't do magic. I'm just a horse. Nice teeth. Thanks. I paid quite a bit for them. Did I mention how great your teeth look? Thanks again. What's a nice horse like you doing in a place like this? Hey, I live here. What are you doing here? I'm trying to get back to the future and save the world. The future, huh? And I thought that Franklin guy was off his nut. Well, I gotta go. See you later. It looks like someone's dentures were in here. Hey, I've gotta put them somewhere. Question is, which one's stuffed and which one's the real McCoy? I assure you that we are both real, but we are neither one of us McCoys. We are Edisons, Ned and Jed. Who's who? Does it really matter? Even our dear father can't tell us apart. He only knows that one of us is left-handed while the other is right, but that neither of us are following in his tiny scientific footsteps. <laughs> Hold still, Jed! So, I'm almost too frightened to ask, are you the marble delivery man? Or the model? I'm the model, should I take my clothes off now? No. No, you most definitely should not. We couldn't get your body shape right anyway, unless we cemented two slabs of marble together. But then your statue would have a big seam in it. That's okay. It would have one anyway. Look, don't call us. We'll call you. Dang. 
I'm no marble delivery man, but rock is my life. <laughs> I'm sure that's terribly amusing, where you're from. Where exactly did you come from? The future. Kind of spooky sounding, ain't it? Ooh, the future. I'm from the future. Look out. Gosh, it would be so nice if you weren't here anymore. I'm the delivery man, okay, if I unload in here? Actually, we are well supplied with medium, so thank you, no. This ain't medium, it's the extra large stuff. Please go away. We artists are very sensitive to your kind of people. What kind of people? Big, dumb people. Sorry, hope I haven't jostled you. Too late. Wow, doesn't even blink. Please do not perturb my model. It must be Nads. Or is it Jads? Sorry, hope I haven't jostled you. Too late. It must be Nads. Or is it Jads? It. Oh, where hath gone the muse that once guided my hand with such care? Must inspiration be so transitory? Must art be so cruel? I'm a failure. Don't say that, Ned. Father was right. We Edisons are made to be scientists, not artists. Dear brother, we must be strong in these times of creative adversity. Why don't you let me take over for a while? I'll clean this rubble up and start over. You relax. Have a cappuccino. I'm glad we switched places. I think you're coming out quite well. How about an amendment that the president has to be a human being? Please, this is serious business. You're right. What a pretty pussycat. Yipe! All right, paint! Very Spartan. Very Spartan.
I don't wanna. I don't wanna. Yo, I... Where am I gonna put it? Where am I gonna put it? I can't open it. I don't think I can do that. Yo, I... It's blocked off with somebody's bed. It's one of those pulley things. The Constitutional Convention invites your comments, critiques, amendments to the Constitution. Hey, tall, dark, and spiffy, my name's Hoagie. Well, how quaint. I am, of course, Thomas Jefferson, noted scholar, musician, horseman, student of the sciences, member of the bar. Oh, sure, I've heard of you, dude. What's in the can, Tommy? Thomas, my name is Thomas, and this, my chubby friend, is a time capsule, filled with remembrances of our time to be revealed 400 years hence. What are you guys doing in here? We're writing the Constitution for the United States. Right now, it's just a constitution, I'm afraid. We hit a slight creative block right after the preamble. That's why we've put up a suggestion box over there. Has anyone ever told you you're a very snappy dresser? Why, yes. I studied at Virginia Coat and Technical, where I majored in color theory. I was captain of the varsity cravat team. Those are impressive credentials, Tom. Thomas. Dude, I loved your work on the Declaration of Independence. Ah, thank you. What was your favorite part? I like those S's that look like F's. I see. So, how's the time capsule going? I'm sorry to say that except for my log, we haven't got a thing. Well, later, dude. What? What's going to happen later? Yo. Hello. What's up, you cold? Cold? I'm freezing. Why don't you build a fire? Well, I keep asking Jefferson to build a fire, but he won't. Says he needs the log for posterity and won't part with it. He's going to give the log to starving children? I don't get any respect around here. Why, I bet if George I spent the winter in Valley Forge, Washington was cold, we'd get some heat in here. How come you sign your name so big? Astigmatism. That's where your joints hurt, right? All right. The, the truth is that a friend once told me that women go c crazy over guys with a big signature. 
Shouldn't you guys be working instead of just sitting there? Writer's block. We can't think of any um, amendments or anything, so we put a suggestion box over there. I don't suppose you have any br brilliant ideas. What about free sandwiches for all roadies? No, there's no such thing as... Don't say it, dude. I've heard it before. Awesome blanket there, dude. Thank you. It was given to me by my dear old colorblind Aunt Hattie. Well, I gotta go, dude. They don't seem to have gotten too far. Stolen from the desk of George Washington. Hey, keep your hands off that. You can look, but don't touch. Hey, keep your hands off that. Excuse me. Yes? Whoa, you're like George Washington. Very much like him, according to my wife, Mrs. Washington. Awesome. Indeed. Weren't you president or something? Yes, I expect to be chosen president unanimously. I'm very well connected. Do you think I should be the ecology president or the education president? I'm a big fan of education. Really? How surprising. Cold enough for you? Cold? Why, you don't know the meaning of the word. I spent a winter at Valley Forge. Now that was cold. Why, my spit would freeze before it hit the ground. Cool. Extremely. Excuse me. Yes? Is it true about you and the cherry tree? Oh yes, it's quite true. Why, I've cut down acres of cherry trees in my day. Would you give me a demonstration? I don't see why I should. I think it's freezing in here, don't you? Freezing? Poppycock. Excuse me? Yes? Do you really have wooden teeth? As a matter of fact, I do make use of artificial teeth. I find them to be far superior to the ordinary enamel variety. Wow, what do you brush them with? I use a toothbrush, much like everyone else. And a bit of wood polish, of course. Doesn't that taste awful? Not if you take them out first. Don't you have a problem with splinters? I've been to war, boy. No one who's heard the thunder of musket fire, smelled the sulfur from a cannon blast, and felt the fear in the haunts of his comrades is going to be bothered by a little thing like, oh, blast it. Well, what about woodpeckers? Hardly. Where could I get some of those? They're rather expensive. Mine were custom made for me by my good friend, Paul Revere. Didn't he invent 3D glasses? I believe you have him confused with someone else. What are you looking at out there? The future of our nation. That young couple by the tree? No, no. I was just admiring my reflection in the window. Striking, aren't I? I've been thinking about what you said about cherry trees. Pondering the great truths, eh?
Well, I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there isn't. I only cut down cherry trees. Family tradition, you understand, cherries only. There's nothing out there but cedar and kumquats. Bitcha. Mmm, salad oil. Bitcha. I can't open it. Bitcha. It's empty. Hey, Dr. Fred! You're going to get really chafed hands doing that. Sorry, coffee jitters. Maybe you should switch to decaf. No, then I'd fall asleep and the dreams would come. We have to do something. What do you suggest, college boy? No diamond for the central unit, no power for the chronogons! A mutant monster of my own creation, roaming the countryside, taking over the world! It's a dark day for mad science! Why can't we just fix the time machine? It needs a whole new diamond! Now where am I going to get the money? How much could it possibly cost? Two million dollars! So, you've got money, don't you? Well, I didn't get all the money I expected from that TV show about us. We had to rent out our mansion as a hotel just to make ends meet. Uh, if only I had signed that contract in time! What contract? Well, after that incident when I was possessed by a meteor from outer space, Somebody decided to make a show about us, but they didn't pay us anything. All we got was a cut of the video game. Wow, that thing made millions. Yes, I forgot to sign the royalty contract in time, though. I still have it in my safe upstairs. Let's go get the contract out of the safe and sign it. I forgot the combination. But that's... that's so stupid, Dr. Fred. I know. It gives my enormous brain nightmares. Every night I dream about opening the safe, but I find something horrible inside and slam it shut! Over and over again, night after night! Is that why you drink so much coffee? I haven't slept in two years! How's the mad scientist biz? Not too lucrative lately.
We're living mostly on the income from renting out our mansion. That and Edna's tips from her exotic dancing. Well, gotta go save the world. Good luck! It's pretty darn cold. I don't think I can pick that up. Ahem. Do you ever inhale flies when you snore like that? I had an uncle who snored as loud as you do. He lived in California until he was declared an earthquake hazard. I'm trying to save the world from a nasty tentacle. Nice room you've got here. It reminds me of the greeting card store I used to work at. Well, thanks. You've been really helpful. This beautiful 4,000 karat diamond can be yours today for the special rock bottom introductory price of $2 million. The number to call is 1-800-STAR-WARS. Don't miss this amazing once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. He's still making his pitch. Up too late? Try a fickle finger's fate. Stick in a dime and you'll have a good time. My grandma gave me one like this for my birthday. I can't pick it up. That guy is lying. Sleek design, sturdy construction, attractive housing, all in all a fine phone. Couch Potato Shopping Channel, Wanda speaking. Uh, I want to buy a diamond. That will be two million dollars. Do you have a major credit card? Um, I have a numbered Swiss bank account. What's the number, sir? Um, it's 846-427-35327. I'm sorry, the Credotron shows that account to be empty. My grandma gave me one like this for my birthday. I can almost get it now, but Lardo is lying on the sleeve. Hi there! Buzzing fluorescent light makes the beef jerk. Except for those beef squigglies, I got everything I want out of there. Mmm, that buzzing fluorescent light makes the beef jerky look especially attractive. It won't budge. It's useless. No one will ever be interested in my design, so I'm ending my novelty inventing career right here in this tacky motel. How appropriate. <sighs> I can't even do this right.
I can't see it very well from here. Hi, my name's Bernard. What's yours? Dwayne. Isn't that depressing? Gee, you look depressed. What clued you in, Brainiac? The gun was a good tip-off. I'm having a crisis here, a warehouse of anguish. I'm a novelty goods designer by trade. I've come up with some fabulous ideas. The exploding lollipop, itching powder gum, and reverse 3D glasses, to name a few. The problem is, no one likes my designs. I send them all over the world and no one responds. I just wish someone would say they liked one just once. Oh, woe is me. I like your design ideas. Well, I didn't mean you. Maybe I can help cheer you up. Oh, I can hardly wait. Why don't you try whistling a happy tune? I invented a whistle that turned your lips green. Nobody liked it. Ugh. Maybe some calisthenics would help. Last time I tried calisthenics, I ruptured my spleen. Ugh. Let's discuss philosophy. Okay, here's my philosophy. Life is completely pointless, especially mine. Nietzsche had some interesting ideas along those lines. Oh, who cares? Philosophers are all failures like me who couldn't make it in a real profession. Nice music they pipe in here, huh? It's from the Elevator Classics series. It seems like this one tune has been on all day. I've never been so depressed in my life. Uh, never mind. When you pull the trigger, a humorous flag is propelled out of the barrel on a stick and unfurls. I can't see it very well from here. Green! Bernard! What are you doing up here? Well, I couldn't stop Purple, and he's gonna go out and conquer the world, and, and I'm afraid of what he'll do if he catches me, if Dr. Fred doesn't find me first. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Hey! What's up, Bernard? What do you suppose Purple's up to now? Well, he wants to take over the world, so I figure he's up to something devious. Pushing old ladies down the stairs? I wouldn't doubt it, but I was thinking more along the lines of politics. Why the litter box? Have you got a cat? Don't ask! How does a tentacle sit in a beanbag chair? Oh, that part's easy. Getting back out of it is hard. Wanna help me save the world? I'm afraid to leave the room. In fact, I don't think I can even move from this spot. Purple scares the daylights out of me. How's your new band doing? Green tea and the sushi platter? We're doing great! We've decided to really capitalize on our strongest quality as a band. Carefully crafted melody and distinctive counterpoint? Volume, man! Volume! We have a chance to win a Grimy Award as the loudest new band! We're pulling out all the stops! Are you working on an album? Yeah, we're doing a CD called Rap on the Forehead. I've got a few tracks hooked up through the stereo if you want to hear them. Have you gotten any airplay? No, we're a little too experimental for most radio stations. 
but we have a huge following in the club scene. Weren't you looking for a new guitarist a while back? Yes, but we decided to go with a guy who plays power tools instead. We can generate a lot more sound that way. That's great. Yeah. Can you actually use that bowling ball? No, Purple brought that in here after he grew arms. He got really discouraged, though, because he doesn't have fingers. Well, see you later, Green. Yeah! Good luck in saving the world, B-Man! It's pretty small. Neat! It looks too heavy for me to pick up. Hoagie would really love these. Plenty of wattage in this stereo. I can't wait to try my 8-tracks in it. Wow! This is loud! Hoagie would really love these. I'd rather not. I'll push it. Whew. Aren't you Weird Ed Edison, the paramilitary nut? Why, yes, I... Hey, do I know you? Yeah, I'm Bernard Benuli. I broke into your house five years ago, kidnapped your hamster, broke into your piggy bank. Hmm, nope, doesn't ring a bell, but I can't remember much about that period anyway. My psychotherapist thinks something traumatic happened to me back then that I'm blocking out. So you gave up the crazy military commando thing? I'm much better now. I don't have those... those bad thoughts anymore. Now I collect stamps. Nice hamster. Does he do tricks? No, he just sits there. I used to have a really smart hamster, but... something happened to him. That hamster really should get some exercise. Well, Dad puts him to work down in the basement sometimes. But then he starts sweating, and then he gets wet, and then he gets cold, and then he refuses to work. Your dad or the hamster? Are you making fun of me? No, I... I get upset when people make fun of me. I just meant... Oh, it makes me so mad. I just want to... Relax. I want to relax. I'll be okay if I just focus on my stamps. That's quite a nice collection. Can I have it? No. I mean, uh, no. They mean a lot to me. Sometimes I think they're the only friends I've got. Are all your hobbies this fascinating? I don't have any other hobbies. These stamps are my whole life. If anything were ever to happen to them... How are the folks? Well, Dad's in the basement doing an experiment. Mom's in the next room spying on a honeymoon. Ted's in the front yard. Holding up a bowl of lard? Well, it's a birdbath, actually, but it rhymes better your way. What happened to the old hamster? I... I don't remember. When I try, all I can think of is a flash of light and this horrible sound. 
What was the horrible sound? It was sort of like ding. Oh God, I hear it in my dreams till this day. Well, hope I didn't get you too excited. Bye. Peace be with you. Pony Express stamps. Yes, not the most valuable kind, but they have a lot of sentimental value to me. Hey, don't touch my stamps. He's reading the Wall Street Journal. Cute little fella. It's signed, Edna, thanks for giving me the fever. Creepy, must be an Edison. Excuse me. What is it? I'm rather... Say, aren't you Bernard Bernoulli? No, my name is Threepwood. But I never forget a face. You broke into our mansion a few years ago to save your little friend. When did you come for this time? I'm a repairman. I've come to fix your VCR. There's nothing wrong with my VCR. You keep your paws off of it. I was just admiring your statue. Thank you. It's been in the Edison family since colonial times. One of Fred's ancestors carved it. How's Dr. Fred doing? Well, he's still upset about the family financial situation, seeing that it's his fault and all. But he seems a lot better now that he stopped sleepwalking. How did he wreck the family finances? Well, we should have made millions on the computer game they made about us. But the resident genius locked the contract in the safe in his office and forgot the combination. What's wrong with sleepwalking? Ordinarily, nothing. But when Fred sleepwalks, he remembers the combination to the safe. I find him in the office, opening it, screaming like a cat in the oven, and slamming it again. Something about what's in there really scares him. Unfortunately, I was never able to catch the combination since he works it so fast. How did he manage to stop sleepwalking? He stopped sleeping. Fred drinks a lot of coffee. Me, I only drink decaf. This is quite an array of gadgetry you have here. Yes, it's the best surveillance system in the state. Is that a Plexus 7000 VCR? It sure is. It's got a dual tape speed motor with cobalt casing. Don't touch it. Are those xenophobe crystal matrix monitors? They sure are. They're so clear you can see the fleas on the bedroom wall. Don't touch. Do you think I could uh, play with these a bit? Absolutely not. I'll let you get back to what you are doing. Come back any time, you big hunk. <laughs> it's Dr. Fred's office. Nothing going on in there. I see a large pulsating lump with blue stripes on it. Looks like the hallway. Something strange is going on in there. Not too interesting. Ooh, baby, what a man. You ain't kidding, precious. It looks like a physics professor I knew in the second grade.
It's not exactly the Ritz. No time for that now. I'm saving the world from Purple Tentacle. I can see the roof and some Christmas lights. It's locked. I can't. It's stuck. I'd rather not. I'd rather not. Hmm, a handle attached to a rotating shaft which transmits and modifies rotary motion and torque. There's no flag on it now because it's evening. Hmm, a handle attached to a rotating shaft which transmits and modifies rotary motion and torque. Wow, a pulley! By using a combination of flexible materials and a wheel, one may gain mechanical advantage by changing the direction of motion and the applied force. Hey boy, you missed the party! You and the clown were having a party? No, no, last night! At the Novelty Goods Salesman's Convention! I tell you, we Novelty Goods Salesmen know how to have a good time! Has anyone ever told you you look like Don Corleone? That's strange! My wife says I look like Charlie Parker! So, want a cigar? Sure, lay one of those Havanan babies on me. Thought I was gonna blow your head off there, didn't you? Well, you were right! You shouldn't smoke, it's a bad habit. That cracks me up every time. Jumpy little sucker. Disgusting. Jumpy little sucker. I can't get hold of it. Slippery little devil. I can't get hold of it. I can't get hold of it. I hate that clown. I can't. Uzo's intimidating. Conditioning, I guess. Hmm, air conditioning, I guess.
Actually, I'd call this more of a threek. Hmm, brown water. I think I could lubricate my car with this stuff. The Duke Memorial Brand Microwave. It looks pretty broken. Who knows what surprises await inside? It's a coin-operated clothes dryer. It's a coin-operated clothes dryer. You put quarters into the dryer there. This fork couldn't pop a spit bubble, let alone a tough clown like Uzo. It's really stuck to the floor. The Chicago Manual of Thermodynamic Flux Induction Circuit Design. Great stuff! A horticultural horror. I guess not too many birds bathe in the evening. Hey, Ted! Talkative as ever, eh, Ted? Boy, I haven't seen you since I was here five years ago. You know, I bet you'd really like my friend Hoagie. You could hit him over the head with a bowling ball and it wouldn't faze him. Boy, I wish I had as little on my mind as you do. No offense intended, of course. You haven't changed a whole lot. Well, I'd best be on about saving the world. It's closed. It's empty. Hi. Don't sneak up on me like that. Nice crowbar. Thanks. Don't even think about asking to use it. I need it. What are you up to? Uh, I uh, locked my keys in the car. I don't see your keys in the car. Uh, actually, I lost them somewhere. If you're locked out, why break into the trunk? I uh, have a spare set of keys in there. Nice crowbar. Yeah, I know. Nice crowbar. Yeah, I know. Nice crowbar. Yeah, I know. See you later. Yeah. It's really dirty.
What beautiful clear water! Keep out! Area contaminated with industrial waste. Hey, what is it this time? What are you doing? I'm inventing you, simpleton. What's it look like I'm doing? What are you inventing? It's a new size independent fastening mechanism based on circular geometry. Well, see you later. You might if you cut that hair a bit shorter. You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once. Well, I'll just run to the chronogon. There's something in the chronogon. It's the battery plans I'm supposed to give to that Red Edison dude. Mmm, super battery, eh? Brilliant design. Sometimes I amaze myself. Now all I need is oil, vinegar, and some gold. Chateau de Chipo, 1775. Salad oil. Ah, excellent. I need that for my super battery. What am I supposed to do with that? Hey. What is it this time? What was it you needed for that battery again? Oil, vinegar, and gold. I still need the vinegar and gold. Let me know if you happen across any.
You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come. I'm just a failure. Hey, there's a letter here for you. For me? <laughs> Probably another rejection slip. Oh well. You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once. No way, I'm not touching that junk. Couch Potato Shopping Channel, Wanda speaking. Um, uh, I want to buy a diamond. That will be two million dollars. Do you have a major credit card? Um, I have a numbered Swiss bank account. What's the number, sir? Um, it's 846-427-3527. I'm sorry, the Credotron shows that account to be empty. Sounds like the cats caught a moose up there.
Excuse me. Yes? I've been thinking about what you said about cherry trees. Pondering the great truths, eh? Well? Would you give me a demonstration? I don't see why I should. I've been thinking about what you said about cherry trees. Pondering the great truths, eh? Well? I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there... Oh, well, what do you know? There is a cherry tree out there. Well, let's go chop the sucker down. I said, come down from there at once! Try to understand. I'm stuck in this... Voila! You're quite a man. Yes, I know. Thank you. This is exactly the sort of thing I need for the time capsule. I'll bury it tonight and it won't be seen for hundreds of years. Future generations are in your debt. Whoa. Sorry, I'm saving it. It's going to be a famous log. It's a little cage with a canary in it, perched above a little lever. Huh. Get me out of here! I haven't done anything! Well, you must have done something or you wouldn't be here now, would you? You'd be out in the lobby with your tentacle owner getting dressed up for the human show. Owner? No one owns me! Gosh, no owner, you say? Well, don't worry about it. I'm sure someone will come adopt you before we have to put you to sleep. Damn that, Dr. Fred. Hey, she knows the Edison family motto. Dr. Fred, is that you? What? You're nuts. There hasn't been a Fred in the Edison family for 200 years. The last Fred was such a shame to the whole family, not to mention the whole human race. Well, who are you then? I'm Zed Edison. That's my wife Zedna, and my son Ved. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. 
Where am I? You're in the ancestral home of the once proud Edison family. We were once the masters of this house, just as humans were once the masters of Earth. Now we are the servants, the pets. And not very good at either one, I might add. Oh, get bent, you overdressed nightcrawler. How do I get out of here? If I knew that, do you think I'd be here? What's this about a human show? It's a degrading farce. That's what it is. These slimy tentacles put humans in humiliating little costumes, do sickening things to their hair, and then force them to parade their ridiculous talents in front of unqualified judges who are paid off weeks in advance. Didn't get in, eh? They said macrame wasn't a talent. Pointy-headed goons. I heard that. I'm tired of talking now. It's been a long day, and I'm only... human. I think they're both cheating. I think they're both cheating. Best not bother them, they're busy cheating. Probably marked. Hey, they can cheat, you can't! Fascinating! I can't get to the Chronogon from here. You who, Mr. Tentacle Guy? What? Get me out of here! This is a violation of my rights! Rights? You're a human, you don't have any rights! I have to go to the bathroom. Ha, that's a good one. Imagine a human using a bathroom. <laughs> Come on, let's take a walk. Okay, human, do your business. I can see Dr. Fred's old lab. And his generator is still there. Gee, I could really use that power, but I'll never get through this window. I think I need to plug that in, but I don't think it's long enough to reach anywhere. It's empty.
jumpy little sucker. It looks almost real. When you pull the trigger, a humorous flag is propelled out of the barrel on a stick and unfurls. Hey, isn't that Albert Einstein? Huh? I don't see anything. Oh, never mind. Hi there. What can I do for you, kid? Has anyone ever told you you look like Don Quixote? That's strange. My wife says I look like Charlie Parker. So, want another cigar? Okay, but only if you promise not to light it this time. Would I do a thing like that? I don't get it! Get lost, kid! Hi there! What can I do for you, kid? So where is everybody? The really big bash was last night. I guess they're all sleeping it off. Now get lost! The voice of Uzo in a box. I like what they've done with the place. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Tentacle Guy. It's about time. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Tentacle Guy. What? Ooh, I don't feel so good. I think I'm going to <laughs> throw up all over. Uh-oh. <laughs> time to visit Dr. Tentacle. What have we here? I feel pukey. Indeed. All right, now hold still. Are you going to use your scalpel? No, of course not. Darn. Hmm. Hmm. What? What? Just as I suspected. What? There's nothing wrong with you, human. What a letdown. Well, I'm late for the show. I'll send your keeper back for you. Oh, sit. Stay. Good boy. They've got the spleen mixed up with the liver. Oh, I've got plenty of those at home. Licensed to treat tentacles for the betterment of the tentacle race. 
licensed to euthanize humans for the betterment of the tentacle race. I still don't understand how they can eat through a sucker. I shouldn't. He paid a lot of money for that. I'm la- Ooh-wee, you are one ugly human. Excuse me? Man, I'm not kidding. You are just about the homeliest homo sapien I've ever seen. Thanks. You ain't so hot yourself. I never said I was, but sheesh, have you taken a look at yourself lately? I mean, your hair alone is gonna give me nightmares. Not to mention your teeth, your clothes, your one eye that's bigger than the other. Gee, how much worse could I get? Not much, unless there were two of you. Where I come from, I happen to be quite the babe. You mean the kennel? That doesn't say much. Everyone in there is a human show reject. Human show? Hot dang, sign me up! Sorry, humans can't sign themselves up, no matter how ugly they are. Go ask your owner to sign you up. Ask him to sign you up for a haircut while they're at it. Could I register another human for the show? You can't do anything. You're a human. This is a tentacles world. Don't you get it? Only tentacles can own property. Only tentacles can vote. And only tentacles can register humans in the show. Uh, the guard guy wants to see you in the kennel. He said to just leave all your stuff here. Which guard? What's his name? I don't know. I usually call him Mr. Tentacle Guy. What a coincidence. That's my name. Really? Of course not. Now beat it. I've got a lot of standing around to do. Just the regular old flag. I'll use the chronogen. I waited, but she never picked it up. Hope she's okay. That's where they're having the human show. That's where they're having the human show. Looks pretty old. They may be oppressive and power mad, but at least the tentacles recycle stuff. It has three settings. Cook, jet defrost, 
and mutilate beyond recognition. Remove specimen here. It says opener. It says medulla oblongator. It's busted up good. Hmm, it's empty. Hey, how'd you get out? Get back in there. I wish Dr. Tentacle would stop losing patience. You who, Mr. Tentacle Guy? What? I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, all right. Come on, let's take a walk. Okay, human, do your business. Mr. Tentacle Guy. It's about time. You who, Mr. Tentacle Guy? What? Ooh, I don't feel so good. Again? My name's Laverne. I'm a sophomore. My name's Harold. I'm a thoroughbred. Is your hair naturally blue? Natural? I guess. This took several very expensive sessions at the Bosch Grooming Salon. I've got the hair competition in the bag. What are you, uh, guys waiting for? We're all waiting for the human show to begin, of course. If your owner's going to enter you, they'd better get you some name tags quick. But then again, why bother? My owner says I'm going to win. I'm the most beautiful human there is. That's quite a tutu you've got there. Thank you. My owner paid quite a lot of money for it. My owner buys me anything I want. Where is your owner? He's not here right now. But he would be if he in any way possibly could. His bus broke down in Pittsburgh, so he's stuck there with the other owners. This is the first show I've ever done. Alone. Well then, good luck. Who needs luck when you've got beauty? They both seem to be very happy about something. Hold it! Humans aren't allowed to roam free here. I'm taking you back to the kennel. I wish I had some sort of tentacle disguise. You who, Mr. Tentacle Guy? What?
I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, alright. Come on, let's take a walk. Okay, human, do your business. Aha! Uh -huh. Get away from that! It's a good thing I finished in there quickly! Now scram! They just don't make founding fathers like they used to. Here I am, don't get your curls in an uproar. Excuse me, Mr. Washington. Boy, what a mess. The guys downstairs say they want a big family crest, and in the four corners they want a keg, some babes, a guitar, and some drumsticks. And underneath it all put, America rocks! Just put the plans on the table and I'll get to it. Mr. Tentacle Guy. It's about time. You who, Mr. Tentacle Guy? What? Ooh, I don't feel so good. Again? think that will do much good. How do you really feel about humans? Honestly, sir, I think they're filthy, obscene, foul, sickening, like the stuff in your eyes when you wake up, like the wax that builds up behind your suction cups after a few days. Like that's enough, son. 
I just wanted to be sure you weren't one of those humanist sympathizers. What with this ridiculous human show going on here, there's humophiles everywhere. I'm no humophile, sir! That's good. Now let me tell you about a little plan I have. Hello, I'm a tentacle. I'd like to enter my insignificant human in the show. Oh my, yes, yes, of course. Take these tags and put them on your human and have them wait on the bench in the lobby. Entrance will be judged in three categories. Best smile, best hair, and best laugh. Thank you, fellow tentacle. Unlike humans, you have been very useful. Oh, uh, thank you. Believe me, it was my pleasure. Now all I need is a human. Yowza! That was one good-looking tentacle. Say, cutie, what brings a hot tentacle babe like you to a dump like this? I'm looking for a pet. Sorry, honey, you came to the wrong place. These three are problem humans. Untrainable, disobedient, downright surly. He's just jealous because we've got opposable thumbs. Someday you will accept tentacles as your masters. Ha! <laughs> you losers can't even ride tricycles. See why no one wants them as pets? Don't you recognize me? I uh, know, I, uh... Hey! Aren't you the waitress from Club Tentacle? I love that place! I'd be there right now if I weren't flat broke! I'm, uh, here to see you, big boy. Really? Well, what are you doing for dinner? How about Club Tentacle? Hey, what am I saying? I can't afford to take out the trash, let alone a classy babe like you. <sighs> I'm looking for a pet. I told you, you don't want these humans as pets. And I don't want to be no pet, so... Nah. I'm here by accident. Bye. Hey, I don't want to be here either. Get away from that. That's my job. Nice clock. Yes, it's a valuable antique. I'd like to show it to you, but I'm presently charged with the task of guarding it. No one will get near it while I'm here. Couldn't I please touch the clock? Sorry, no. No one touches the clock while I'm on duty. Aren't you curious about what's inside the clock? Not really. Guarding it is more or less the same, no matter what's inside. Has anyone ever escaped from this place? Some try once in a while, but I always fetch them back. That's my primary duty here, and I take it very seriously. I always get my man, no matter how long it takes. Why, I once trailed a renegade human for six days. He led me clear through the hills and up to the top of those mountains to the west. You couldn't possibly imagine the horrible things I had to eat to survive. Coleslaw? Good heavens! 
You're quite a tracker, aren't you? Rather. I always get my man, no matter how long it takes. Hi, I'm Laverne. Laverne, eh? Curious name for a tentacle, I must say. Are you here for the show? Yes, that's right. Well, good luck to you then. There are some jolly good prizes to be won. Why, the grand prize is a dinner for two at Club Tentacle. Well, be seeing you. Yes, perhaps I could regale you with further tales of my tracking expertise. I wonder if that still leads down to Dr. Fred's old lab. <laughs> Stupid tentacle. That ice looks incredibly old. It's a dented old can. There's a black here about it, in commemoration of the Constitutional Convention interred by Thomas Jefferson, A.D. 1790. Run over by a plow, A.D. 1795. Sorry about the dents. Chateau de Cheap, 1775. Chateau de Cheap, 1775. Some things are best left unopened. Ah, excellent! I need that for my super battery. Hey, what is it this time? What was it you needed for that battery again? Oil, vinegar, and gold. I still need the gold. Let me know if you happen across any.
stolen from the desk of George Washington. Excuse me. Yes? Mr. President, may I offer you an excellent smoke? Can you also provide me with a light? No. Pity. Excuse me. Yes? Mr. President, may I offer you an excellent smoke? Can you also provide me with a light? Sure. Well, in that case... Blast, I hate it when that happens. See if you can't find those for me, will you? There's a good lad. Jumpy little sucker. Could you use these? Why, thank you, young man. Strange, I wonder if I should cut down on the coffee. Hey, Tom, look! The father of our nation is cold. Better build a fire. You're right. Huh? I guess you can have my log. Me? Why should I build the fire? You build the fire. I'm bothered by the smoke. You build the fire. I'm bothered by your attitude. You build the fire. No, you build the fire, Mr. Penmanship. No, you build the fire, log lover. No, you build the fire. No, you build the fire. You big baby! Hi there! Hello! Feeling better now that there's a fire? Much better, thank you. My teeth were grinding into a fine powder, and that blanket was really making me itch. What's with the canary over the fireplace? Oh, that's an early warning system. It's quite ingenious. The canary is trained to ring the bell madly the minute it smells smoke. Then we know the building's on fire and we run like crazy. Well, why doesn't the fire in the fireplace set it off? I assume it's because all the smoke goes up and out the chimney. Who thought of it? It was invented by Red Edison, the owner of the inn. 
Who feeds the canary? Actually, no one does. It's a self-feeding canary. It's specially bred with some kind of nutrient-producing bacteria in its gizzard. It's quite a time saver. I expect everyone will have them in the future. I see. Amazing, isn't it? Nice painting of a turkey, dude. I'm glad you think so. The choosing of the national bird is on our agenda for the convention. Well, I thought the national bird was the eagle or something. It may well turn out to be just that. You see, there are two schools of thought on the matter. Ben Franklin and I are in favor of the turkey, whereas Jefferson and Washington, for some reason, want the eagle. But Franklin's always outside playing with his ridiculous toys instead of here where he belongs, so it becomes two against one. What's wrong with the eagle? Well, it's a bird of prey for one thing. I don't think that's an appropriate symbol for our country. What's so great about the turkey? They've helped us to survive since we set foot on this continent. They're symbolic of prosperity and the thanks we give for our lives here. Besides, they're kind of cute. Don't you guys have anything better to do? Such as what? We'll figure out what to do about the national debt? Debt? This is a prosperous country. We don't have a debt. I see. Good. Well, gotta go. Goodbye. I can't go through the fire. the idiot who started the fire. Stolen from the desk of George Washington. It looks pretty clear in here now. Say, did you get the pen on our way out? No, I... I found a blanket blocking the chimney. Son, do you know anything about a blanket? Uh, didn't the dude next to you have one earlier? Uh... Uh, hey, catch you later. Ah, 
are the final element for my ingenious battery. Stand back, boy. Give me room to work. A miracle of modern science. It will look lovely here on the shelf until I take it with me to Baltimore. Don't look now, but the British are coming, dude. Eh? Where? Is that supposed to be funny? I'm very busy. It's mine, mine, mine. The meter says that it's at zero power. Flush my one chance of getting out of here? Yeah. It's totally covered with crud. I don't wanna. There's no water. I won't be able to get it very clean without soap. The water's all sudsy now. Dum -de dum Looks like a big storm. See, this is why I never wash my car. Hey, Ben. Oh, it's you. Where are you going? What about your experiment? Even science sometimes gets cold on account of rain, my boy. But how are you ever going to get lightning if you're not going to stand out in a storm? 
To be frank, which I am, I don't know. The science of electrodynamics, much like your mind apparently, is still in a state of relative infancy. Back to the drawing board, I say. What a genius. It's mine, mine, mine. The Hi. Sorry, can't talk. Busy making history. I got something good for you, mister. Uh, mister? Mr. Brainstorm? Yes, hand it over. Hmm, doesn't this belong to somebody? Yeah, Red Edison. Ah. I'm sorry, but the man has no vision. A lightweight, durable fabric like this going to waste down in his basement. When I'm done with it, it will fly. Hmm. Eureka! The all-season Francocopter, ready to make history! No, there's no fuse! So, what do I light? For the last time, you're not going to light anything! You just push it! The whole time? How am I going to get up that high? Listen, just wait for me to say the word now! Then push the kite into the air, alright? I'm on you, lasagna. Let's hope so. Now! We. Look at her go! Now all we need is a little... Hey! So what happened after I fainted? Well, after the lightning hit the kite, it came crashing down on your head. The lightning? No, the kite. Drat! What do you think we should do? Try, try again. That's the spirit. Now! She's handling kind of funny. You got it. Just hang on there. She's too heavy. I can't control her. Hang on, Ben. Hang on. She's breaking up. She's breaking up. Run for your life. Now that was interesting. Yeah. Say, can I see that kite for a second? No, I'm taking it back to my lab in Philly right now so I can study the results. Wish me luck. I never got your name. It's Hoagie, sir. Nice working with you, Hoagie. I promise to name an invention after you someday. Gosh, thanks. Flush my one chance of getting out of here? Yeah. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. It looks ready to go. Well, I'm all ready to go, but I guess I'll have to wait for Bernard and Laverne. Hello, my silent gauze wrapped friend. I'm concerned about the human show. Where am I going to find a human to enter? Most of the humans are probably entered already. I've got to get power to my chronogen. Maybe I could try to find some batteries. There's something else about the human show. What do you think they do with the humans afterwards? Probably they just take them home. There's something else about the human show. Is it really moral? It reminds me of American politics. My, those are nice clothes you're wearing. My grandmother has a couch covered in that material. Do you think it's strange me talking to a mummy? It's not so different from talking to specimens at med school. Except that you're a little older. I really should go now. <laughs> I almost killed myself on a pair of those once. Groovy. No way, those things are dangerous. He's too heavy to carry. Not my style. Classy. Hello, my silent gauze wrapped friend. I really should go now. Call me sometime, okay? He's too heavy to carry. He's too heavy to carry. Great, Scott! You're purple! Uh, um... Yes? Well, don't you just look good enough to eat? What's that supposed to mean? You're not a human sympathizer, are you? Why, yes! I'm a firm believer in human rights. <laughs> I'd almost think you were serious. You know, I'm working on a way to get rid of the humans once and for all. Say, you look kind of familiar. Of course I do, Nitwit. I'm Purple Tentacle, renowned world conqueror. 
Are you the same purple tentacle who knew Dr. Fred? Up on your ancient history, are you? Yes, I remember that insignificant insect. So, what are you plotting? I'm building a shrinking ray, which I can use to shrink those pesky humans out of my sight for good. Tell me more about this shrinking ray of yours. I call it the Diminuator. The biggest problem left is to design a trigger that doesn't require fingers. If you will excuse me, I've got something in the oven. Anyone I know, eh? At least he hasn't conquered Antarctica yet. Chuckle, chuckle. According to these, the tentacles control most of the world already. I don't want to disturb anything with Santa Claus over there eyeballing me. I wonder how it can float in midair like that. Hmm. Club Tentacle. Dang, it says tentacles only. I can't, it's behind the glass. Ah. That's my boy. That's my boy. Well, that's the spirit. Everyone's raring to go. Let's get this show on the road. Ah, here it comes. My finest hour. got no smile to speak of, absolutely no laugh, and he's as bald as a cue ball. In other words, not a chance in any. And so I said to her, that's not my suction cup. <laughs> you think that's funny? Listen to this. Anybody care for a bribe? What do you think we are, human? Ha ha ha! Human! <laughs> Doctor! What is it? Is someone sick? We can't have sick humans in the show. Well... Uh... <laughs> 
I examined them all myself. They're all perfectly healthy looking to me, except for the dead one. Now leave me alone. Hey, when are you guys going to judge best hair? Oh, all right. As usual, no one competes with Harold. Agreed. Keep up the good work, you judges, you. Maybe we should add a rule that you can't dump sludge into the water supply. What manner of fool would do that in the first place? You're right. Hi. Hi there. Still trying to get back to the future? <laughs> Laughed at by a horse. Whoa. Not my type. The Chicago Manual of Thermodynamic Flux Induction Circuit Design. Great stuff! The Chicago Manual of Thermodynamic Flux Induction Circuit Design. I bet this would work better than a sleeping pill. Ahem. The LALR compiler is constructed by the following method. First, develop a rigorous elective grammar. If the elements have NP completeness, the crunchy factor can be ignored. Blah, 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 blah. Whoa. Well, he's got an impressive smile, absolutely no laugh, and he's as bald as a cue ball. In other words, not a chance in it. Hey, when are you guys going to judge best smile? Oh, all right. You know, 
that quiet one in the bandages has the biggest smile I've ever seen. But his teeth aren't as pearly white as Harold's. Oh, of course, there's no comparison. But I think we should give second place to the mummy, because he maintains it for so long. Agreed. Doctor? What is it? Is someone sick? We can't have sick humans in the show. Well, uh... <laughs> I examined them all myself. They're all perfectly healthy looking to me. Except for the dead one. Now leave me alone. What are you babbling about? You really should have told the judges if you weren't feeling well. Oh, ick! Now, how did that mess get in there? I think I'm going to be sick. Someone in here not feeling well? I was feeling fine until I saw that. Is that your regurgitation? No, I'm an healthy human. Didn't you just say you thought you were going to be sick? That's just a figure of speech. Do you realize you could have infected the whole show with human influenza? But I just got all my shots. You're a good-looking human, Harold, but you know the rules. You're out of the show. <laughs> what a mess. I hate cleaning up after humans. Hey, don't you think you should judge best smile again? Oh, all right. I like the quiet one with the big teeth. There's nothing in the rules about them being white. First place goes to the mummy. Agreed. Hey, don't you think you should judge best hair again? Oh, all right. Let's give it to the blonde. What's your reasoning? She winked at me. Good enough. Hey, don't you think you should judge best hair again? Oh, all right. Mm, the mummies has improved. 
Yes, but it's dull, flat, stringy, lacks body and control. A human's hair should stand up, not stand out. If only it was a little bit better. Don't you think you should judge best hair again? Oh, all right. Wow, that's the best hair I've ever seen on a mummy. Thick and full and juicy. The mummy wins. Agreed. Judge best left. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, who's got a joke? Hey, I just flew in from Baltimore, and boy, are my suction cups tired. <laughs> a classic. Nobody laughed. Maybe we should come up with a better joke. Agreed. Don't you think you should judge best laugh again? Oh, all right. Okay, who's got a joke? I know. Why did the human cross the road? Because his tentacle owner told him to. <laughs> It's amazing how the mummy can do that without moving his lips. I say we give him first place. Agreed. Well, that makes him best of show. Let's go congratulate him. He is very well preserved. I'll miss his laugh. It's time to give him his winnings and start packing up. We gotta get this whole show to Baltimore by Thursday. Yes, our work here is done. Well, Ted, this is where we <laughs> part ways. You've certainly helped save humanity. Even though you've been <laughs> dead for thousands of years, I think you're my <laughs> favorite Edison. Dinner for two at Club Tentacle. Dang, it says tentacles only. Ooh.
Whoa! Dinner for two at Club Tentacle? I can't wait to tell my wife! You're free! Free to do what? Free to... to... run wild through the woods like humans should! Big deal! I said you're free, now get off your fat, lazy butts and start enjoying it! Enjoy being hunted for the rest of our lives by that mustached old tentacle with a big net? If we ran off, he'd be right on our trail! If we stay here, we know we'll be warm and comfortable. Outside, we'd be eating bugs and moss. You'll be eating my fist in a second. The woods are filled with wild animals. Lions, tigers, and skunks. Man, I hate skunks. Uh, Zed? I'm tired of talking now. It's been a long day, and I'm only... human. Oh, here I go, out the door. Oh, I do so enjoy these freedoms that my forefathers fought and died for. Give it up. Sheesh. Tell you about the time I tracked an escaped human to Madagascar. He had stowed away aboard a tuna boat, you see, and I narrowly missed stopping at leaving port. Unfortunately, the only other available transport was a rowboat, so I. Mmm. Yes. Never mind. I forgot what I was going to say. Would you like? I have everything I need, thank you. Sorry, I'm under strict orders from Tentacle Number One, the Almighty Elder, the Grand Poobah Purple Tentacle, not to let anyone near this clock. But I have rights, I'm a tentacle. <laughs> and a darned attractive one, I might add. But no one gets to this clock while I'm here. And unless I have to go chase down some escaped humans, I'm glued to this spot. Rats. Can't get close to him.
Cats dig these. Yum, yum, <laughs> scrumptious vermin. It's as if he'd rather scratch himself than play with this adorable rodent. It's a bottle of correctional fluid. Can't get close to him. This ought to be good. Gee, I hope that's not lead-based. I can't get to it up there. Well, what do we have here? Looks like a prosthetic rodent. Another specimen. Lieutenant, I want to ask you something. It may trouble you. Ask away, sir! I can take it! I've got a strong stomach, nerves of steel, mouths of brass! Suck at it, son. This is important. Have any of your friends seemed a bit firm lately? Ooh, heck! You mean like non-squishy and non-slimy? That's right. Come closer. I've recently become suspicious that humans might try to infiltrate us. No! Though basically stupid, they can be tricky. They may be in disguise. Hey, look, a skunk. <gasps> Come back here, you mangy humans. You can't do this. This is an escape proof facility. Who says you can't learn anything from cartoons, eh, kitty? 
Good riddance. Looks abandoned. Probably just the tentacles winter, uh, winter things. I'm not interested in tentacle junk. It's the same generator that was in Dr. Fred's lab. I don't think so. It's the same generator. I don't think I can put that in the chronojohn. I'm sorry to do this to you, little fella, but it's for the future of the whole planet. Looks like there's some kind of rodent down there. He's frozen solid. Gosh, I hope this isn't like the primitive, dangerous microwave ovens of my century. Those things could really pop a hamster good. Uh-oh.
That was fun, but only because this is the 22nd century. You see, kids who put hamsters in microwaves back where I'm from get taken away from their parents and put up for adoption. So don't do it. He won't run, he just shivers. There's a whole lot of keys on here. Here, perhaps these are your keys. Where? Gimme. Hey, thanks, pal. Keep the crowbar. Thank you, masked man. What sort of person would carry around this many keys? Drat. Ew, it's soaking wet. Thank you. 
I figure this is about $876,600 worth of quarters. It only takes dimes. My grandma gave me one like this for my birthday. I don't think I can put that in the chronojohn. There's a little teeny tiny sweater in there. Ooh, cute! It shrunk to doll size. This ought to warm him up. <laughs> Not my type. There's a face print on the glove. I hope it's sprung for good. I can't. Dr. Fred doesn't have a penny. It's from George's hardware. George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement.
George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. <clears throat> Boy, it's sure quiet in here. I wonder if there might be any ideas worth discussing in the suggestion box. Maybe somebody should take a look. I say, lads, I have an idea. Does it have anything to, to, to do with starting a fire? No. I was thinking it's about time we open the suggestion box. Don't you agree? Sure, George, if you say so. Yes, whatever you think is fine with us. Excellent. What's he thinking? No one of any importance has been here all day. What could be in the suggestion box? Perhaps he intends to suggest something himself. Oh. Ah, here's a suggestion. It says, George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. What do you think, gentlemen? Mm, whatever you say, George. Your name's on it. I'm sure you must have a good reason for suggesting it. Yes, it's strange. I don't quite... Well, I'm sure I had a reason for it. If there are no objections, we shall add it to the Constitution immediately. No? Good, and so shall it be law. What's a vacuum cleaner? That's how you empty the vacuum cleaner, I guess. Well? Look at that sucker go! He just keeps running and running and running.
It looks ready to go. Well, I'm all ready to go, but I guess I have to wait for Bernard and Hoagie. Hey, Dr. Fred! We have to do something. Yes, we have to get a new diamond! How about catching Purple Tentacle? He's long gone, probably taking over the world as we speak. Soon we'll all be speaking, well, English, I guess. What if we unpollute the river? I could just shut off my sludge matic machine, but it's too late! You have a machine whose sole function is producing toxic waste? You can't have a high-tech laboratory like this and not spew poisonous filth! All the other mad scientists would laugh! Isn't there anything we can do? Go diamond shopping! Call me when you get a diamond! He doesn't want that. Mmm, thanks. I needed a little pick-me-up. Now that's good coffee. Mmm, thanks. I needed a little pick-me-up. Must open safe. Must sign contract. Must provide for family. I don't think I can pick that up. He almost took my hand off with the door. I can see the safe. I can almost make out the combination. It's... Get away from there! Darn! Well, you know what they say. If you want to save the world, you gotta push a few old ladies down the stairs. There's no tape in the machine.
There's no tape in the machine. There's no tape in the machine. There's no tape in the machine. There's no tape in the machine. Dr. Fred Edison, Internal Revenue, come with us. We'd like to go over some of your records with you. Upstairs. The tape's at the end. Dr. Fred Edison, Internal Revenue, come with us. We'd like to go over some of your records with you. Upstairs. Dr. Fred Edison, Internal Revenue, come with us.
Let's see, it's 101 99957. The party of the first part shall hereby be known as a crazed maniacal genius. Sleek design, sturdy construction, attractive housing. All in all, a fine phone. Couch Potato Shopping Channel, Wanda speaking. Um, uh, I want to buy a diamond. That will be two million dollars. Do you have a major credit card? Um, I have a numbered Swiss bank account. What's the number, sir? Um, it's 846-427-3527. I'm sorry, the Credotron shows that account to be empty. Say, what's the filing date for a BFD 206ZZ insufficient credit applications form? You have until midnight on the 12th working day past the first full moon after the end of your fiscal year. However, you can extend the date by filing an RPM 78 waning interest extension any time before the close of business on the second Tuesday after. What is it? Are you guys brothers? At the IRS, we're all brothers. What have you done with Dr. Fred? We've got him safely locked in the next room while we go over his books. No, you can't go in and see him. And don't even think about staging some kind of rescue. Who's your tailor? Very funny. I'll just be moseying along. Keep your nose clean, kid. Good thing we've got Dr. Fred under wraps in the next room, huh? Hey, you can't go in there. All that red tape ought to keep him busy. I can't believe what a mess these records are. Hmm. Is that a W390B frivolous spending report? No, it's another 561AB negative attention statement. Ah. Good thing we've got Dr. Fred under wraps in the next room, huh? All that red tape ought to keep him busy. Is that a W390B frivolous spin? Seems to have a high tensile strength. Dr. Fred must still be asleep. Uh-oh. Hey, where'd he go? Ah, there you are. Just lie there and take it like a man. No time for fun now. I've got to get him out of here.
I'd rather not. The weave is quite fascinating. Actually, a reverse double overlap which makes for phenomenal strength. Hey, Ted! How am I going to get Dr. Fred out of here without that big goon stopping me? Maybe I can get him out so fast they don't hear me. Boy, I wish I had as little on my mind as you do. I mean, my best friends are stranded in time. I've got to somehow get hold of a diamond. Maybe I could get someone else to buy me one. Well, I'd best be on about saving the world. Uh-oh. Hey. Who's this, Doc? Relative? Well, I'm sure we can order him next. This isn't a party. something. Everything okay in there? Well, try and keep it down, okay? I can't carry him. That didn't do much. Hmm. 
nah, I'm not gonna make that mistake again. Dr. Fred, are you okay? Dr. Fred? I'd better get him to the lab. Well, I got him in here, but he's out cold. He's already unconscious. Decaf might kill him. But it's worth a try. I got the contract for you to sign, Doctor. Sorry, I don't like to sign things that I haven't read. Okay, so read it first. I'm busy trying to think of a way to save humanity. I don't have time to read. Now leave me alone. Will you please sign this contract? I don't sign things I haven't read. Okay, so read it first. I'm busy trying to think of a way to save humanity. I don't have time to read. Now leave me alone. Will you please sign this contract? I don't sign things I haven't read. Sign it or I'll get real mad. And do what? Not be my friend anymore? Ha ha ha. Will you please sign this contract? I don't sign things I haven't read. Oh, forget it. I'll get rid of Purple Tentacle myself. Oh, yeah? How? I offered Purple Tentacle a bribe and he took it. Where did you get that kind of money? I used one of your checks. Brilliant! I'll just stop payment on it tomorrow. Exactly. All I need now is your signature. Well, good luck.
It's no use. We've already missed the deadline. I doubt they'll take it without a stamp. Pony Express stamps. Yes, not the most valuable kind, but they have a lot of sentimental value to me. Hey, don't touch my stamps. Hey, wanna see a neat trick? Sure. Neat, huh? Ah. Uh... <gasps> my Pony Express stamps. You ruined my Pony Express stamps. Not to mention five years of therapy. Get out of my room. Jeez, what a grump. We should really try to find some outlet for those. <laughs> Negative feelings. Yes, what do you want? Hi there, is this Dr. Fred Edison? Who did you think you called? Dr. Spock? Look, I don't have all day. This is Farley Crock at LucasArts Games. I just discovered your contract among some very old files, and, well, our lawyers say that we, uh, have to pay you two million dollars in back royalties. Uh, for the use of your family in the Maniac Mansion video game. What? This is Farley Crock. No, I heard that, you moron. When do I get my money? Oh, right now. It's been credited to your Swiss bank account. Operator, get me a travel agent! This is an emergency! Potato Shopping Channel, Wanda speaking. Um, uh, I want to buy a diamond. That will be two million dollars. Do you have a major credit card? Um, I have a numbered Swiss bank account. What's the number, sir? Um, it's 846-427-35327. Very good, sir. We'll send the diamond by Pronto Post Lightspeed Delivery immediately. Thank you for calling. Now that's service. I'd better get this to Dr. Fred right away. That should do it. Where did you get this diamond, anyway? Uh... It was donated by a group of Girl Scouts who were in the neighborhood. How heartwarming! 
According to my instruments, everything is in readiness. Your friends have activated their units, so it's time to throw the switch! Great! Hoagie! I'm so happy to... Hi! Laverne! Wow! I'm so glad you two made it back okay! I hate to interrupt, but there's no time to lose! Now that you're back, we've got to proceed with the original plan and send you back to yesterday to turn off the sludge matic Huh? Say what? Now hold on a minute, Dr. Fred. They just barely made it back to our time alive, and I think... Ha <laughs> ha! You can't turn off the machine if I get there first. Uh-oh. Don't worry, guys. This time I know I can stop him. Uh-oh. I guess we better do something. Let's go. No, wait! You can't all go in the same store. Didn't you see the fly? We're... We're... We're some kind of monster, dudes. Great. Stuck here the rest of my life listening to Bernard talking and watching Hoagie eat. Mom warned me there'd be days like this. Now wait just a minute. It's Green Tentacle! It's Green Tentacle. What was that, Green? Green Tentacle behind you! What? I believe he's trying to warn you about me. Oh. We're going to turn off the sludge matic and defeat your evil plan, overgrown worm. You sorry lot are no match for me. But there's three of us. Well, sort of. Nevertheless, I mean to crush you. Yeah? You and what army? Why, this army, of course. Yikes. You see, I've been busy. These are all versions of myself from the future. I've been bringing them back here using the Chronojon. Together, we will conquer the world. You ten there. Go to the basement and guard the sludge matic No one is to touch the sludge of man. Now, creature, I must decide what excruciating tortures to... Leave them to me. I've been itching for a chance to test out my newly completed diminuator. Uh-oh. Excuse me. Um, us. <laughs> All right, the rest of you come with me. Next stop, the world. What do we do now? Whoa. It wears off. Aha. Run for it. Damn. The battery must not have had time to recharge, but it will. Shh! Maybe he won't find us. You who where are you, human?
Sleek design, sturdy construction, attractive housing, all in all a fine phone. No time for that now. Aha! Uh-oh! Take that! <laughs> and this! Drat! How can it possibly continue to thwart me? Hmm... Aha! Uh-oh! Take that! Drat! How can it possibly con- Aha! Uh-oh! Take that! <coughs> and this! Drat! Always- Aha! Uh-oh! Take that! Drat! Always conks out as I'm about to finish them off. Uh-oh, this looks like it might work. I don't need to take over the world. Hey! Where'd he go? Hmm, this door appears to be locked. Hmm, this door appears to be locked. Hmm, this door appears to be locked. It looks like pureed horseshoe crab. Thank you. 
Dr. Fred, are you all right? Get me out of here! I feel like I'm pupating! Excuse us. What is it? Could you let us pull that lever over there? No chance. Now, buzz off. Great! Now we can turn off the machine and prevent all this tentacle mayhem from ever happening. Well, I'm certainly glad that's over with. Yeah, let's get out of here. Leaving so soon, we haven't had the chance to get to know one another. You humans amount to very little. Ha 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 ha! Eek! Run all you like, you insignificant insect. My other selves are taking over the world as we speak. We can't reach it! You can't stop me. Just what is it you have against humans, anyway? Humans are our oppressors. They made us live in this horrible motel. They created us in ungainly forms, so we could not rise against them. Try walking around with your legs tied together and glue on your shoes. You'll see what I mean. But humans also created the Sludge-O-Matic, which made you super intelligent. Nonsense. I created that myself and sent it back through time. I knew Fred's mad scientist ego would make him use it. How's that for a paradox? It makes my heads hurt. Right. Anyway, you can see why I detest humans. Let's discuss your hatred of humans further. What's to talk about? I detest the whole cackling, hand-wringing lot of you. I see. Soon the rest of the world will too. You're pretty handy with that ray gun. Center of the forehead every time. Would you like a demonstration? I bet you couldn't hit your own forehead. Nice try. Are you really a future version of Purple Tentacle? Who else would be brilliant enough to invent the Diminuator? Are you more or less intelligent than the Purple Tentacle from our time? The same, but I've had 200 years to think things over. <laughs> Are you sure you're a future version of Purple Tentacle? I said I was, did I not? How is it that you can grow hair without follicles? It wasn't easy, but the secret made me very wealthy. Let's discuss your hatred of humans further. What's to talk about? I detest the whole cackling, hand-wringing lot of you. Sounds like you just hate Dr. Fred. Hmm, I suppose you're right about that. I didn't start out hating all humans, just Dr. Fred. Why don't you zap Fred with the ray gun for a change? Hmm, perhaps that would be entertaining. Uh, 
surely we can talk this out. Hmm. Talk? Surely. Wait! You haven't heard the last of me. I'll be back, and the next time, the world and all its piffling inhabitants shall be mine. All mine! <laughs> Mine. Okay, little fella. Mail this to Siberia. <laughs> Our work here is done. Now we can go home. Well, kiddies, it's been more fun than a jumpsuit full of weasels. Now, kindly get your freakish hide out of my home. Please, Dr. Fred, you've got to get us out of this mess. We look terrible, and we can't buy clothes off the rack. I'm getting sort of used to it. Maybe we could go on the talk show circuit. Help us, Dr. Edison. You're our only hope. Oh, all right. Hmm. It seems you're not exactly the sideshow attraction you imagined. You're just three complete goofballs stuck in one suit of clothes. Well, I'm glad that's taken care of. Looks like everything's back to normal.